welcome to Behind the Spotlight. Thanks for joining us. We have Ivory Blue in studio today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So it's so great to have you. We're going to kick it off with your song. It's called Tidal Waves. Yeah. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about it? Yeah, it's um like when I wrote it, I was just really feeling like the anxiety that the world has just like bestowed upon me. <laughs> yeah. you know? and Love that. Uh, like, Isn't that fun? <laughs> anxiety. Like, it's not like natural thing where it's like, oh, I'm so happy. Oh, shoot, I'm yeah. not. Yeah. But yeah, it's about anxiety and it's sure. the closest like metaphor I could find for it. Tidal waves. Tidal waves. I like, like it. A big tidal wave. I, I can totally get that. Okay. Cool. Well, this is Ivory Blue with Tidal Waves. Take it away. Thank you. 
And that was Tidal Waves by Ivory Blue. And you know, it's so interesting watching you perform because I see you basically playing all the instruments using your setup here. How does that work? Well, I don't, the only things I don't play is, uh, are the drums and the bass. Mm -hmm. um, but usually um, it's a looper. So I'm oh. able to like play a part and let it kind of continue on through the song. Yeah, and I noticed like, that you're yeah. recording these pieces at the mm -hmm. very beginning and yeah. then you're looping it and it all kind of melds together into yeah. this Pull song. Pulling in and out. It's a yeah. music, it's incredible. Yeah. That's really what a song is. So it's like, Absolutely. it's really easy to do like when it comes to like arranging it. It's repetition, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is, it is. And then, but then you add the vocals, yep. but it's so neat to see one person do all of that. Did Were you self-taught? Uh, looping wise? Yeah, all of it. Yeah, I didn't have like a teacher or anything. Is that like, yeah, nobody I don't taught know. me how is to that, do looping. Is that something you take YouTube lessons? maybe? Looping teachers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess YouTube would be the looping teacher. <gasps> sure. Because I looked up a lot of stuff. Like I, I know Ed Sheeran, yeah. he did it. Yeah. But he did it with like acoustic and stuff. And yeah. I like playing acoustic and amazing. things. I know. He can make it sound good just acoustic, right? So you learn, you've learned it all yourself and you learned your instruments. It's very impressive and it Thank sounds you. amazing. And we've got more coming up from Ivory Blue after this. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. I'm here with Ivory Blue. And you have such an interesting story to me because you were originally from Indiana. Yep. Um, you were adopted, uh -huh. had kind of a rough childhood. Yeah. And then eventually found your way to Kansas City. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about deciding to run away from home. Um, my, okay, so I, since I was adopted, I, I was into a family that had like four kids already. Oh. And they adopted uh, two more or something, and they adopted me, my brother. And I really wasn't like favored, I guess. Sure. I was kind of like the problem child, and it showed, like, wow. in the way that the family was kind of like treating each other and things. Uh, they loved uh, the love was there. It was just I felt so much rejection yeah. for like who it was, and I was blamed for everything. It just, it's really petty stuff. But when you're a kid, it it really measures up to the point you're like, enough is enough. Yeah. And you just leave, like it was like just gone. 15 years old, I left. You left at age 15. You left home, and yeah. where did you go? Um, it was really snowy, so I didn't really have long to go before I like got really cold. Yeah. So I went to the park, and I thought I could maybe like sleep there for a while. You know, oh. it was you know it's just like I figured yeah. it, You're naive you know this ain't bad. Yeah, the, come on. This will be fine. Yeah. And it was not. <laughs> I was like, no, this is not working. I can imagine. So I went to a friend's house like four or five, maybe six blocks further towards the school that I was at. And um, they let me stay there. Like their family, like his family allowed me to stay there. And I lived there for a while. And long story short, you know. I'm alive. You're alive. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't stay outside in the park yeah, that in the freezing sucked. temperatures. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you did um, you did find some support yes. and eventually you ended up, when did you come to Kansas City? Um, I was living in Oklahoma City um, after I moved from Indiana. Um, I went to different f homes and stuff like that with friends and things. And I was like, okay, so Oklahoma is great, but I'd love to see Seattle because I met a really good friend nice. on like the websites and stuff and so I lived up there for a while and it just wasn't the same so oh. I was like I have to get out of here you know it was nice the person was nice and everything I don't want to say bad things about yeah. them but the whole experience was just really negative and it was really cloudy there Seattle wasn't for you no yeah I, I didn't even get to see the scene like I was so yeah. poor I was living off quarters oh. like to go to the bus to go to work isn't that so. something too is you can go to a great city but if you don't have the money to live yeah in, you can't one experience of the it. most expensive cities oh is it yeah yeah I see I wouldn't know Absolutely. yeah I wasn't there so yeah. it's like so you so you left Seattle yeah. and then decided. Well, I mean, why Kansas City? I'm kind of curious. Well, to know what 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 made you feel at home here? Maybe. I I do feel at home here. Yeah. I really do. It is definitely a part of my heart now. Um, my friend from Washington, mm -hmm. her name's Beth. She knew somebody that played piano in Kansas City. Oh, crazy. And uh, on the outskirts of it, anyway. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, 
this would be cool if you all collaborated. Yeah. But it turned out to be more of like they could take you in and wow. like help you so you don't have to be on your own anymore. Yeah. So I really just had an option. I could either go from Seattle back to Indiana where the corn does grow and just like all the parties <laughs> and stuff like that. Or I could actually try to make something of myself yeah. and move out of this squander of this life of squander and move to Kansas City. And not live off of quarters anymore. Not live off quarters. You know, it's like incredible. they've helped me for the past seven, eight years. And it's incredible. It's the Van Lu family. And wow. they've just really opened up their hearts and for real. Like it took me a while to open up mine. But now that yeah. I have, it's just the trust is there and everything. Oh, that's incredible. So of course, it's home. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you've developed that and yeah. been able to come back from that. Because it is, it is very hard to um, recover from some of these childhood injuries, you know, er yeah. early on. Well, they have therapy for that. It's exactly. like a, yeah, living, there's, people make a living off of it. There's a whole reason that that exists. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So, I mean, tell me then, you, you started to get into music mm -hmm. as a way to handle some of these complicated emotions, right? To escape? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Totally. Yeah, to escape. Tell me what you write most of your songs about. I, I used to write, like, and I say used to first, I, I used to write my songs about, like, um, the rejection from my family and yeah. stuff like that and, like, feeling rejection over the years because I got kicked out of houses mm -hmm. as well as, mm -hmm. like, moved into them mm -hmm. and had a fun times, built up memories. But now my songs are actually about the experiences I find. This is going to sound stupid, but, like, spiritually speaking of what I find in the world that reflects on me, like just how I see myself in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's like when I write tidal waves, I don't do it to like relate to anyone. I do yeah. want to relate to people, but it's now become a way for me to connect to like be able to see myself in my songs. Yeah. And to and seek so. out, to seek out connection. Totally. I mean, yeah. that, I think that's what attracts people to music to begin yeah. with. Yeah. And, and also, you know, I think it sounds like you went through a journey of self-discovery as well, and you did decide to uh, identify, and you, you came out as non-binary, transgender. Tell me about yeah. identifying as that and being an artist. What has the response been like for you? Um, it's, it's actually, I'm not really sure. Okay, so I love the fact that people are open and things like that. There are some people that aren't, yeah. obviously. Um, I'm not your poster child for like, anything yeah so I'm just myself and sure. non-binary is the closest like label I could put on myself to right be kind of like putting a label on my music okay. like it's all kinds of stuff yes it's pop it's rock it's a little bit acoustic you know stuff but my identity is a lot more personal than just non-binary mm -hmm. but that is the thing that like I identify as so it's like my music of course it's, it's right in there because yeah. it's like to answer your question, people have been very uh, open and I love good that. about it. That's great. It's, it's so. very rare. It, it is mm -hmm. a it is rare to um, to see that in an artist. So and yeah. it is you know, but it's interesting because it's also your identity is constantly changing, yeah, as your totally. music is too. Yeah. So I I, th I I like that you tie both of those things in together. Mm -hmm. And you know, how did you finally come to this to be able to? Um, just express who you are as a person because I know a lot of artists struggle with either trying to be put into a box or this is how we want to brand you or yeah. how did you finally feel comfortable enough to say okay this is who I am and I know it's not a traditional definition and it doesn't fit in a box right what gave you the strength to do that I think it was because I couldn't do anything else yeah. like it was I that was either like me or nothing like, okay. that's it. Like, I, I'm not an actor or anything. I can't pretend to be something else. Like, I could pretend to be something that is more, like, accepted, you know, and things Mainstream. like that. Mainstream? Yeah, you know. Okay. So, I like, I like what you said, too, about you're always going to offend someone anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, you might as well just... Yeah, not offend yourself. Don't offend yourself. Yeah, and then that's... you translated it, like, perfect. So, <laughs> my mumbo-jumbo, you know... <laughs> the the most important relationship is the one that you have with yourself. Yes. I like this. Nice. I like Teamwork. it. Teamwork. We got it. Knocked we, it we, out. <laughs> Knocked it out of the park. Well, thank you so much for sharing sure. some of your journey and your moments with us. It's it's great to hear that you've learned a lot and, and grown thank as you. well. And we've got more coming up after this. Time right my heart to run away car. The last one leaves it dumb, but I don't leave. Welcome 
back to Behind the Spotlight. We've got Ivory Blue in studio with one more song for you, and you're kind of getting a sneak peek of new, new music. All of this stuff is upcoming, right? Yes. Which is wonderful. Yeah. Tell me a little yeah. bit more about Elite Dreamland. Okay. So when I wrote this one, it was initially about, like, just looking back on life and just how far, you know, and how far I've come and just like that. I like that. And it just made me realize that the the cool things in life about being rich and about being famous and all that, it's not really all about that. Like life, life is a little bit more than that. Hopefully. So, Hopefully yeah. for most of us it is, it is about more than that. About, yeah, about connections yeah. and love and stuff, you know, all that, all that sappy stuff. All the sappy stuff. <laughs> well, it's, it is true and you make a good point. So, right. uh, so thank you for sharing all of your new music with us. Sure. Go ahead and take it away with Elite Dreamland. Here we go again, just thinking about back when it will never feel a heart, even if we're back alive there. But lately I've blown some time, it's hard to cheat it, I'm locked down, ready to go to make another glitch switch. Ooh, deep down to the darkest parts where you never know down from up where we're going now. So wake up on these streets, a one way ticket. How the hell I get back to me? Tie my heart to a runaway car. The last one leaves it dumb, but I don't wanna leave. Yeah, maybe I don't wanna bring you down, cause I'm a gunner yet to be found. Again, just thinking about the feeling Maybe in a year from now We're living nearly dreaming Love somebody just to leave them on the back burn If you're playing Russian roulette You better take your turn Oh yeah Everybody learns to play that game But they load them all up with blame Wake up on the street, the one way to get how the hell I get to believe. Tie my heart to a runaway train, the last one leaves in the day, but I don't wanna leave. Yeah, maybe I don't wanna drag you down, cause I'm a lost cause can't be found. Say you proved yourself to you, well, it's just another thing. You're bound to find another life out there A dollar for a mile, all you got is change And they wonder if you came to play So did you come to play the game? Ooh, by the way that we're feeling tonight Everything is gonna be alright Wake up on these Found the way I'm looking down The way I'm looking down The way I'm looking down oh, The way I'm looking down Looking down The way I'm looking down 